Today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite film cameras, the legendary Iconta. Let's take a look. Hey, it's good to see you. Today I want to talk about one of my favorite film cameras. Um, before I do real quick, you'll notice I'm back in my workshop again. Um, and the reason, uh, last couple of weeks I haven't been uh, out out and about taking pictures as uh, my wife had knee surgery and she kind of needs me close at hand so I've been kind of hanging out close to the house here um, just to make sure she has everything she needs um, I'm sure for too long I'll, I'll get back out and, and start taking some pictures out and about but today I want to talk about probably one of my favorite cameras this was actually a birthday present for my wife this is an Iconta 521-2 and Zeiss has an interesting way of, they actually imprint the name of the camera and the model number in the leather, which makes it a little hard to see. But this is a 120 film format, 6 by 9 centimeter negative size um, folding camera. Um, they made these cameras, I think, starting in the 30s um, and up through the early 50s, the Iconta line. Uh, obviously a big interruption during World War II. This one is a post-war model, which means it was, and, and judging by the features and the lens and the age and condition of it, I'm going to guess this one was probably from the early 50s. It's in really nice shape. The only real wear on it is there's a little bit of paint, paint wear back here on the corner. Otherwise, it looks almost new. It, it just looks really gorgeous. And when I got it, 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 it all worked. Even the self-timer and the shutter, which sometimes those are known to be sticky because they don't get used much. Um, a little viewfinder that pops up. Press a button here and you can open the camera. We're going to put this on the workbench and take a look at it. You can see all the features. I'll show you how it loads and how it works. And uh, then we'll also take a look at some images from this camera. It's just a, a really a fantastic camera. Um, and takes beautiful images. So, before we do, before we get started, if you would please click on the like and subscribe buttons. And uh, I'm going to put this on my workbench here where you can see it, and we'll take a look. Okay, this is the Zeiss Icon, Iconta 521-2. And as I mentioned, they put their model numbers, name and model number, and they're stamped into the leather on the back of this, which seems kind of odd. Um, and on the other end here is the serial number. Um... But it seems kind of odd they would put the serial number on the leather, which potentially could be lost at some point, but that's what they do. Like I said, this camera looks really in nice shape. The only wear on it is on the paint right here. Some got scuffed a little bit. Probably the reason for that is this came when I found it in a, in a really nice leather case. Um, and the this case was actually coming unstitched across the front, so I had to I had to sew the case from right around here to over here. I had to sew this back together. But it, um, it's a really nice case, and that's, that keeps it protected. I don't use the strap on the case to carry the camera. I uh, just mainly keep it in the case to protect it or keep it in some other case. So these are really easy and fun to use. There's a button here on the top that you can use to open the camera. If you want to stand it up, this little piece right here, you can kick that little kickstand out, and the camera will stand up that way. Um, I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but it, you can. Anyway, this has a um, Novar Anastigmat lens. That's a three-element lens. The design is called a Cook Triplet. And um, they are actually are known, despite only having three elements, for very good image quality. Now, this is admittedly the cheapest of the, of the lens versions available for this camera. This is the f4.5 version, 105 millimeter. They made an f3.5 version that was, you know, a little faster. And then the best of them, if you can find one, is a camera that has a Zeiss Tessar um, f3.5. That would be the best of them. But the Novar Anastigmat does a, a really good job. It focuses by screwing the front lens element in and out. And there's a focus scale on this side of this. This Prontor S shutter has speeds. Shutter speeds from one second to a 250th of a second. And bulb also has a flash sync. You can see here on the top um, the lever where you can change your apertures. And um, 
you can also see you know the setting for your shutter speed up here as well as on the front so really convenient little camera there's a little piece right here where you could put a little viewfinder that um, it's kind of like a waist level viewfinder you look down into it and it swiveled you could turn it this way and look down into it or you could turn it up this way and look down there I've, I've seen a couple of them on eBay they're a little pricey because they're uncommon but it basically there's a little slot here and it plugs into that if you ever find one of those viewfinders that's probably a neat accessory to have anyway you push down on the sidebars here and the front closes like that there's a little viewfinder on the top here that you just flip up it's got a little knurled thumb piece there it's got a, a lens and element on the front and it's actually labeled 105 centimeter uh, or 10.5 centimeter which is 105 millimeters and 6 by 9 there's a little lens element in the back um, so it's a it's a relatively accurate viewfinder when you look through it it makes it certainly makes for a nice handhold camera uh, wind knob is on the top the little lever flips up turn it release button and this actually is made so that when you take a picture you can't take another it's got double exposure prevention you can't take another picture until you've wound the camera which is really nice because these kind of cameras that don't have that are really easy to double expose images tripod socket on the bottom another one on the door here if you're wanting to shoot vertical really handy little camera well thought out the under the carrying handle here there's a little button you can see with an arrow you push upward and you can open the back and then you can load film in it and you can see you know when you wind this you can see the take up spool turning the pressure plate is labeled it says Zeiss Icon Film B2 B2 is 120 and somebody actually wrote 120 in pencil on here just so they would know I guess and it also says 6 by 9 centimeter and also 2 and a quarter or 3 and a quarter inches uh, which means this camera was definitely made for sale in the United States with the two and a quarter, three and a quarter inch designation. You um, regulate how far you wind your film by looking through this little red window to see the numbers on the film. You can see the red there. And uh, so it doesn't actually stop you automatically when you get to the next frame. You have to watch those numbers. But cameras are really easy to load. We'll, we'll look at that here in a second. I have some accessories that I do use with this. Uh, one of the first things is, how, you know, how do I focus? I can set my focus distance on this scale here. You can, you can see the, the numbers. But how do I know where to set it? Well, what I use is a little range finder. Uh, this range finder has a, a foot on it where you can put it in an accessory shoe. This camera doesn't have an accessory shoe. But this, you look through this little viewfinder. And you can see there's two windows on the front of it. And it's like a rangefinder built into a camera. You turn this knob and you've got two images. Then once the two images coincide or line up, it then shows you the distance here that you can transfer to the lens. So that's how I do the focusing on this. Neat little accessory. I found this in an antique shop for, I think, $15. If you look on eBay, different rangefinders are, are readily, pretty readily available. They're, they were a very common accessory. The other thing is how do I determine exposure and since I'm using a vintage camera I like to use a vintage meter of about that same time frame. So this is a Gossen Super Pilot or a Gossen Pilot not the Super Pilot um, and it um, has a, a, a selenium photo cell so it doesn't require any batteries or anything. You can use it as a um, reflected light meter or as an incident meter and this one because it's built into this case the photo cells has stayed covered over the years and it's still good usually what kills these photo cells is constant exposure to light but because this has a built-in case and stays covered this uh, meter is still accurate and so I have a, a handy little light meter of about the same vintage close to the same vintage I think this camera was probably made in the early 50s uh, it's one of the later Icontas I mean they made these again starting in the 30s and on through the early 50s I think 52 or 54 and they made a whole range of Icontas. This is a, a 35 millimeter Iconta. Again, has a Novar Anastigmat lens. Pretty similar in a lot of the ways it works. The winding knob and the rewind knob for the film are on the bottom. So is the film counter. Um, but in a lot of ways, it works much the same way. It's got a shutter release here and focus on the front element. Manually cock the shutter. Very simple cameras. The Icontas were very 
very simple economy cameras, but they, they really actually do a good job. This is really a fun camera to shoot. Anyway, I've also got some filters. So you have to use a filter adapter, and this one I had to modify a little bit. You can see the brass here. I had to thin these little, this ring with the slots in it so that it would fit. There is a very tiny groove in between the uh, focus scale and the, the actual front of the lens element. And so this has to fit inside that groove. So I had to kind of thin that down to make that work. But this allows me to use Series 6 filters on it. So I've got red and I've got yellow filters and polarizers and different filters I can put on it. And I mainly shoot black and white with this. So the red filter and the yellow filter increase contrast. And of course a polarizer is good for skies and things like that. And these are these are vintage Kodak um, fil filters and, and holders and uh, this uses a, um, what is it, a 1 in 15 30 seconds or 37 millimeter adapter. The original one from Zeiss, I was able to see a picture of one and it is, it was very thin on the edges so I modified the Kodak to work and that enabled me to, you know, have a filter adapter. The, the original filter adapters are, are from Zeiss are pretty hard to find. So, Modifying that one was pretty easy. Alrighty, let's um, let's put a roll of film in this thing so you can see. I'm going to get it set up so I can actually go out and take some pictures with it. I'm going to use a roll of Ilford HP5, which is an ISO 400 black and white film. So we'll open up the box of film here. And they have these nearly indestructible foil wrappers. I often have to get my teeth involved to get these things open. They're really tough. Okay. Now, first thing we have to do is peel off this paper band here to free the end of the roll of the film. There's a spool, the spool holders are spring loaded on the bottom. And when you take a when you take a, a roll of film, you're going to end up with a spool on the supply side here that's empty, and you have to move it over here to the take up side. So you it, the the used spool from your last roll of film becomes the take up spool on your next roll. So you always need one empty roll of one, one empty spool. Okay, so we get that in there lined up. There are little rollers here that help keep the film going across. You simply take the leader of this film and insert it into a slot in the in the take up spool and get that started. Then I usually wind it till I see this little arrow here. That's by the time I see this arrow. Now this, this arrow is normally made for cameras that have some kind of automated um, system to stop you when you get to the frame. Um, but I just know that when I see that, I've got enough winds around this take-up spool that it's not going to come loose. I can close this, open up this little window, and I can turn it until I see the first number. Now in this case, I'm not going to turn it all the way. Um, part of the reason is, if I turn this until um, I get that first frame on there, that, that big negative, they tend, if the film has laid flat for too long, uh, they have this tendency for the uh, film to start to try to curl. And uh, the first image, sometimes if you just leave it there for a long time, won't be as sharp because it won't be laying as flat. By leaving the film all in the take-up spool here, I find that my first frame, when I bring it across, is uh, flatter. Um, just seems to work better. So um, I'll wind this to the first frame when I'm ready for my first picture. So um, this camera again really easy to use. There's a lever here you cock the shutter. Then once you've wound the film, the camera, you can just press the button here to um, take a picture. Uh, if you need to make a double exposure, you can actually press this lever right here and you can fire the shutter. And uh, there is a lever here. I can pull this down and, and activate the self-timer if I want to take a picture of myself. 
or if I don't have a cable release and I just want the camera on a tripod or something to be really still, I can use the, the self timer to activate the camera. So anyway, that's that's kind of it. Really easy to use. The quality of the Zeiss folding cameras is just phenomenal. This was not their most expensive camera by any means, uh, and yet the quality of construction, if you can find a Zeiss Icon camera uh, in good shape, uh, they're really, really worth having. Now, a lot of older cameras that you get like this, it's not uncommon for the shutters to be sticky or maybe the optics to be a little bit hazy, which means if you don't, I know how to do this. I used to repair cameras for a living, so I know how to fix these things. But if you don't and you find a camera that needs some attention, you have, kind of have to think about what it might cost to take that to a repairman, a camera repair shop, and have them go through it. It'll certainly add a significant amount, maybe even double the value of the camera. Like I paid $100 for this. Or actually, my wife did. It was a birthday present. Um, and if I had had to do, actually, and I didn't have to do anything to this one, it was ready to go. But if I had had to, I certainly would have spent at least that much more again getting it repaired. So you kind of have to keep those things in mind. Uh, if you can find one that um, you can actually handle rather than buying it online and you can actually test it, then that's, that's always an advantage. Anyway, that's the Zeiss Icon Iconta. 521 slash 2, 6 by 9 centimeter. Makes a gigantic negative. Um... You know, it's not as big as 4x5, but it comes pretty close and um, just takes fantastic pictures. Let's take a few, look at a few pictures, and then I'll catch up, catch up with you on the other side. Well, there you go, the Zeiss Iconta 521-2, it's a lot of stuff to say on model number. Anyway, it's a great camera, um, just a lot of fun to use. You know, if you if you run across film cameras like this, um, they're really a lot of fun to use. And you know, you may think the lens isn't that sophisticated, but that big negative really makes up for, for any shortcomings in the lens. And uh, these things just do a fantastic job. And they're really, it, it's really fun to get out and use these, especially when you run into other photographers. They, they always want to ask questions about it. But they're just, it's really fun just to kind of step back and into the world of photography before there was, a, you know, really any automation or anything. And uh, really just learn about what manual photography is really all about. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed seeing this camera and seeing some of the images. If you have any thoughts or comments, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.